Today, we hear from some of the cash-rich, time-poor, whose work rules their lives. It can seem very lonely when you're stuck in the office, pretty much on your own, working away through the night. Really, it is quite lonely. Polly Courtney on her first encounter with a 24-hour culture. The office I worked in was very sterile. It was rows and rows of identical desks, very bright strip lights so that day and night felt the same. Working there at night was a bit surreal, really, because there was hardly any sound. There was the hum of your machine and of other machines on standby. And you didn't feel like you were in the real world. You couldn't hear any noises from the street because of the double-glazed windows. There was one time when I was working and I took the lifts down and wandered around the city. And there were lights on, and I could see a few other faces staring at screens, and it felt as though there were other people out there. Although the sense of loneliness was no less, because you were still faced with the work that was on your PC that had to be on your boss's desk by the next day. The world of corporate finance was not at all what Polly Courtney anticipated when she was recruited straight out of university to become a junior analyst with a US investment bank. She'd expected long hours and plenty of hard work, but nothing had prepared her for what was to come. It was very much a case of being given a huge salary, but what I soon realised was that we were given very little opportunity to actually go out and spend it. The employer does effectively buy out your life, and that is 24 hours, seven days a week, all through the year. There was no time I could take for myself. I could not shut down on a Friday evening or even go on holiday with the knowledge that someone might not call. So holidays were cancelled regularly. It was perfectly acceptable for the firm to cancel a holiday. And people were sort of working for six, eight, ten months without a break at crazy hours of the day or night. There was no stop. Polly Courtney had little interest in living that way, but from the moment she became a junior analyst, new technology bound her to the office even when she managed to leave it. There was just no escaping the call from the boss. Everybody is given some form of communication that belongs to the firm and that effectively makes that employee belong to the firm. And I do remember one time when I left my mobile phone on the kitchen table downstairs, went off to bed about midnight and about two in the morning, my phone started ringing and rang and rang. And in the end, I was woken by the doorbell. A company taxi came round to my door and I was carted back into the office at three in the morning and left to do another day's work and um, got back very late the next day. So there was no line between work life and personal life because I was always effectively on call. And I think that has actually got worse because Blackberries have replaced mobile phones. You can get your emails and you can get PowerPoint presentations and Excel spreadsheets sent to you while you're at dinner, which means these days when I go out with my city friends, there's always a line of Blackberries on the table and there's always someone who has to slip out, take a phone call, do some emailing, maybe go back to the office. So nobody ever really lets go.